Hello all, uh, good evening all of you, uh, a warm welcome, um, well we are doing this online, uh, I wish it was all, you, all of you coming to here in our campus, IIT Madras, uh, well we will do it next time. Uh, uh, my sincere thanks to uh, Nita, for, uh, Nita Gopalakrishnan for uh, making this possible. Uh, I'll just straight away get into the theme today. Well, uh, broadly, when we think about language, uh, we have a very narrow worldview, meaning something that which we use for communicating people and that do orally. Uh, that's such a limited definition because humanity evolved with lots and lots of uh, dynamic uh, uh, rhetorical uh, devices um, and other modalities of expression uh, through body, through facial expression, gestures, signs, dance uh, and m many more form of expression and uh, languages are diverse, their modalities, registers and expressions, they are very dynamic. Um, we are not, uh, having said that, we now want to focus on Indian Sign Language, uh, broadly sign languages, uh, you know, uh, deaf people have an important uh, claim and something important to say about sign languages. Sign languages are a culture, they are a system and a linguistic heritage. Uh, it's also fundamental to deaf ways of living. So an understanding of these notions will not only help us be more democ democratic and more inclusive in our classrooms, but also more sensitive and uh, have a broader cosmopolitan vision in our, the friendships that we make, uh, um, uh, inclusion, uh, notions of inclusion that we develop and broadly uh, an informed life. So with this uh, note, uh, I, I want to hand it over to Neeta. Thank you. Thank you, Hale. Um, actually, um, I call him Hem, but uh, he's Dr. Hem Chandra, a very, very well-known um, professor in IIT Madras. I really thank you, Doctor, for uh, having me here today and bringing up this uh, important topic of Indian Sign Language, which holds uh, all rights of a language in its own way. Uh, so today, I have... Um, two very well-known people in the deaf community who will be presenting. So before I introduce them, I'll just quickly uh, introduce myself because you will be hearing me speak in between. So I'm Neeta Gopalakrishnan and uh, I'm a co-founder of an organization, a company called Uniki, which creates content uh, in Indian Sign Language to cater to the millions of deaf people in India to be able to access information in sign language. And I'm also a passionate educationist of um, deaf children and uh, young people. And I also am a technical advisor with an international NGO called Deaf Child Worldwide. So to introduce today's presenters, We've got uh, Mr. Gopalakrishnan Venkatraman, who is a pioneer in documenting the Indian Sign Language. He was the first author of uh, he was the author of the first Indian Sign Language dictionary, um, and he's a veteran advocate of sign language and deaf literacy in India. He has been instrumental in bringing and unifying a common cause for the deaf community by bringing to fore the challenges that are being faced. 
He started off uh, by setting up the Madras Association of the Deaf. Uh, that's, this is way back in the 70s. And then he, he was also the first uh, member from the deaf community to be invited in for the Olympics. And with his various roles, he has been working with many deaf organizations and associations. And today, he is serving as the General Secretary of the All India Federation of the Deaf, which is the apex body of all deaf associations in India. So, we welcome um, Mr. Gopalakrishnan today. And the next presenter we have is a very young and dynamic, growing deaf leader who is looked up for inspiration by millions of young deaf adults. He is the Indian representative of the World Federation of the Deaf Youth Forum, and he has presented India's views and has maintained diplomatic relationships with his counterparts around the world. He's also a certified sign language teacher and the chief operating officer for Uniki, which is uh, a company that creates sign language content. And he's also the co-founder and a partner of Let's Sign, which is another company which creates content in sign language. He's also a special advisor for the Speaking Hands Foundation, an NGO that works towards education of deaf children. So I welcome these two very prominent and very well-established and experienced presenters for today's uh, workshop. So I'll give the floor up to um, Mr. Gopalakrishnan. So I'm just asking Mr. Gopalakrishnan to uh, start again. So uh, I thank uh, Dr. Ham and IIT Chennai for inviting me to this uh, webinar. My name is Gopalakrishnan. And I am the General Secretary of the All India Federation of the Deaf, uh, which is uh, headquartered in Delhi. So uh, just uh, recently, two years back, I um, won the elections. And uh, since then, I've been working here. And I'm very happy to be in this webinar, too. So to talk, to talk about a bit of my history and about uh, sign language, I really did not know much about sign language because I was uh, used to the oral method. Even in my family, I used to lip read and uh, speak a lot with my family members. But later on, when I saw a lot of deaf people um, who were using sign language, I wasn't very sure whether sign language is good or not. So when I went to America to attend the Olympic, um, the deaf Olympics, the 10th World Games of the Deaf. So a lot of countries, uh, around 80 countries, had participated in that uh, particular event. So just before that event, uh, when, just before I flew to America, so I used, uh, I was uh, using the oral method. But when after I was in America, I saw that a lot of deaf people were signing. Um, we had America, Japan, Africa, so many deaf people over there from different countries were all signing over there. But um, the Indian contingent didn't use sign language much. So after I came back to India, I started propagating sign language so that deaf people, uh, for example, uh, in the oral method, so we can't hear the voices or the speech. So you only have to look at the lips. For example, there are two words like snow, show, slow. So words like these, the lip movements are the same 
So the consonants, the sound of the consonants will be different. But it's very difficult for deaf people to capture the sound of the consonants. So we are not very sure whether it's no or slow or show. So we have to just guess what the word is. But uh, previously, uh, sign language was not uh, allowed to be used in schools. So we had to use the oral method. Later on, we had a person called Dr. Madan who had come to India and he had published a <coughs> book on sign language. But even after that, uh, we had, didn't have any much development. Later on, there was a um, system called the Indian Sign System, which was developed. But uh, we couldn't uh, accept that because um, it wasn't proper sign language. And later on, there was an organization called CBM um, that funded a sign language project, uh, Indian Sign Language Dictionary uh, project to, to, to develop a dictionary. So I, I was working there and my son, Amresh, was also working with me. So after uh, two years of uh, work, uh, we published the dictionary and also started the Diploma in Sign Language Interpreting course, which was approved by the Rehabilitation Council of India, so which was started for the first time in India. And uh, we had a lot of batches for the next five years. We had a lot of interpreters uh, who were certified and even the dictionary was published and distributed. And later on, uh, I joined as a sign language teacher then. Uh, it, the classes started around uh, 2002. And slowly, uh, we have around, uh, uh, at the moment, we have around 300, around 300 sign language interpreters, and uh, some more interpreters who aren't uh, certified. <clears throat> and I'm also happy to say um, the establishment of the Indian Sign Language Research and Training Center by the government. So they're also doing a lot of work on that. And we also have a lot of NGOs like, uh, I'm sorry, his uh, video is uh, frozen. And after this, um, I, um, it's about the Indian Sign Language Research and Training Center. And now uh, we also have a lot of uh, uh, organizations, civil society organizations and non-government organizations like uh, Um, Nita here. So I think we are having issues with uh, Mr. Gopalakrishnan's video here and his internet connectivity. So I'll request uh, Mr. Rahul to kindly uh, present now. Hi everyone, um, let me present myself uh, to all the IIT students and uh, you know like you're all uh, probably you know like uh, thinking about how a deaf person is and about the language, sign language, so let me say something about it. So uh, for me, my first language was sign language 
Uh, the reason is because both my parents are deaf and I'm also a deaf person. So my first language was sign language. So I used sign language growing up. And uh, I did uh, learn a little bit of uh, oral method, but uh, I couldn't understand. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to speak uh, proper sentences except for a few words. Um, the reason being, uh, you know, like uh, there is a story of uh, uh, our Mahatma Gandhi about how his struggles and all that. So I'll be able to, you know, like uh, sign the whole story, but I won't be able to speak the whole story out because I won't be able to make this uh, full sentences. The grammar of the spoken language is very difficult for me. So even though I learned a little bit of uh, speech, by the age of 12, I really couldn't understand much, so I was very interested. But my, um, I did use hearing aids, but I wasn't very, you know, like uh, enthusiastic about using all that. So I told my uh, parents that I'm not uh, interested in that. So I moved on to the deaf community and used sign language, and uh, even. Uh, in uh, deaf associations and the deaf clubs. <laughs> so my uh, parents used to take me to all these places and I used to see people signing. And uh, I don't know at that point of time if it was a language or not, but it's all a natural communication. So in the city, um, you know, like they have their own uh, uh, way of signing. So at that point of time, I, I wasn't aware that this is a language or anything like that. So just a way of communicating, so I used it a lot. Once uh, when I've been to Gujarat uh, with my father, there was a program over there. So there was an event. So the, there I saw that uh, the signs that they used were completely different to what I was used to. So when I had been to Gujarat, I didn't understand uh, this particular sign. So that meant it was a sign for night. So there, uh, here we sign in a different way, but there in Gujarat they sign in a different way because uh, uh, that, that was a sign for dark, you know? So the signs were different. And there they used to show this particular sign for morning, uh, like, you know, like brushing the teeth. So I just couldn't understand what the point of time, the local sign language at that time. But my father was able to easily communicate with them, you know, because um, he grew up uh, in Gujarat. Uh, so he, know, he knows the sign language. He's uh, pretty habituated with that. Um, so my family, we lived in Dehradun. So I was uh, much aware of the local uh, uh, lexicon, but my father knew the vocabulary in both these places. So at that point of time, I was, you know, like I was wondering whether uh, the signs in India, sign language used in India were different in different places or whether it was the same. So later on, I uh, joined the course, uh, the Indian Sign Language course at uh, the National Institute of Hearing and Handicapped. So um, we uh, learned about the standard, standardized Indian sign language. And also I learned about uh, the variations, uh, probably there are about 20 to 25% differences, variations in the signs used in different uh, places. For example, in Kolkata, in Kerala, in Gujarat, in Delhi. So in all these places, the grammar of the sign language is the same all throughout, but uh, the vocabulary might be different. For example, colors, uh, the sign for numbers, the sign for the weeks of the day, uh, for uh, the months. So they might have different, different signs which have been involved, involved in those places. They might not be the same, but around 70 to 75 percent of the signs are the same and the way they we sign are the same, just the vocabulary might be different. So this I learned at the point of time. So I was very interested, you know, like to, 
to continue in this field. So I joined as an instructor, a sign language instructor at the same place. And uh, I used sign language. So at that point of time, the local varieties also we had to learn. So uh, probably, um, you know, like we meet uh, with deaf people in different places for a week or for 15 days, and then I learned the uh, variations from different things. Also, just like uh, how in spoken languages, like uh, we have uh, English and Hindi. So, um, you know, like it's not the exact translation when you sign in sign language, because sign language has got its own grammar and uh, it's a uh, naturally evolved uh, language. It's been used for a very long time. <laughs> and uh, we don't have a script. So, you know, like it's all uh, the signs are more, mostly iconic, like home, tree, food. So we can, you know, like use these, uh, combine these signs to have our own grammar. So we don't have the exact translation or exact uh, grammar of the spoken language. So it's completely different. So here, when I learned that it's completely different, uh, you know, like uh, the deaf people have their own language, they have their own um, grammar. We also have our own identity, our own culture. It's called deafhood. So, which is, uh, you know, like, which is not very similar to non deaf people. Uh, for example, uh, the culture with regard to food and clothes are similar, yes. Uh, religion, uh, we also follow the same customs. But uh, the language is completely different. And uh, some of the behaviors uh, are not. Uh, very similar, even though we are a little bit similar, but uh, we still have differences. Uh, the uh, people have their own culture, the way they, you know, like interact and uh, communicate. We sign a lot because uh, for the deaf people in India, um, we have a lot of deaf people, the deaf children whose parents are hearing. So around 95% of the children are born to hearing parents. So uh, they don't have much communication at home with their parents because uh, they don't sign much. So, you know, like they have so many things to express and they're not able to express it at home. So around uh, probably not 5% of that population, uh, um, you know, like deaf children, maybe born to deaf parents, they are not able to communicate well, but for the 95% of them, they're not able to communicate then when they go to school or when they meet other deaf people outside or when they go to the clubs or go, go to the deaf associations when they go there. So when they meet other deaf people and, you know, like they can sign and understand each other. So they, you know, like completely express whatever their feelings are. They weren't able to do that at home at this place are able to do that. So the deaf community and the culture is, you know, like uh, they, are, they are imbibed up very later in life. So deaf people also have their own communication way, just like how uh, we have other spoken languages like uh, English, Telugu, and Tamil. Uh, so similarly, deaf people also have their own language, which they use for interacting with others. Right now in India, um, we have uh, a lot of uh, schools uh, for the deaf, around 80 to 70 schools for the deaf. Uh, but um, uh, so where uh, sign language is used in education, in the schools, uh, around three to six schools only use sign languages in education, where you have, you know, like uh, teachers, um, you know, using sign language to teach uh, lessons from the textbook. So, so later on, when they, these children, when they go to uh, colleges uh, or higher studies, so we don't have um, sign language used much in colleges. Uh, we have a lot of mainstreaming which is happening. 
So there uh, probably you could have an interpreter in a classroom or uh, if the interpreter is not available, then they ask their peers to, you know, like help them to teach them what happens in the class or we have to self-study or do our own analysis. And, you know, like it's very hard for them, you know, it's a very hard life for them. So um, it's very difficult for deaf people to go for higher st studies. So even in the schools, um, the quality of education, you know, like uh, apart from the schools of the deaf, uh, other schools where ch deaf children are studying, it's very difficult for them to you know, develop the language. Um, say, for example, if uh, for, for a deaf child, the hearing loss is not the same, you know, like some some children might have around 40 to 60 percent hearing loss, some might have very profound hearing loss. So for uh, children who have uh, profound hearing loss and for those who can't hear a little bit, for example, they have around 40 percent, 60 percent hearing loss. For those children, hearing aids and <coughs> cochlear implants might help. But they still need a lot of training. So um, in some of the schools, you know, like these kind of children, uh, for example, we have uh, 100 uh, children in a class and then we have uh, um, a child uh, using cochlear implants and then we have a child using uh, having profound deafness. So the way they learn and, uh, you know, like it's very different. Some of them may have uh, better capacity to learn maybe he's able to hear well, and uh, some of them uh, might not be able to hear well and uh, could repeat. And there's a child who with profound uh, deafness, he needs signing. So there are different method methods that has to be used. So some of them might be able to hear and repeat and uh, you know, like they could uh, mainstream and go for higher education. So, you know, that is uh, one way. For those who are use hearing aids and can lip read, <laughs> they, in, uh, while they go for high education, they might be, they should sit uh, right in front of the classroom to understand what the child is, I mean, the teacher is saying. So I'm not sure how well they would do. You know, like for those who have a profound hearing loss, they might be um, having difficulty with uh, spoken languages, but they might be able to sign very well. But when they go for education, they might not be able to understand the lessons and might not be able to understand the teachers because they don't use sign language. If they have an interpreter, then it might work out. So there are different ways, you know. So we are all deaf people, but uh, in, inside that we have different needs. So in India, I have seen a lot of uh, deaf people use sign language for communication. A lot of them use sign language. So because it's uh, the most natural language for us. And um, so we don't have to, you know, like really uh, attempt to make so much of uh, attempt to learn a language that's completely natural and we can uh, talk about anything. So uh, even in the family, some of the families, the sign language are um, used naturally. So for hearing parents, if they can learn sign language, it would be easier for us to, for them to communicate uh, with their child, children. So that's the best way to do. So um, over to Nita now. Yes, great. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, we're still waiting for Mr. Gopalakrishnan's uh, internet to be sorted and join us to continue his presentation. So can I, um, can I ask Rahul to tell us about the community and the culture of deaf people? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, in the deaf community, they have a particular culture. 
first thing is the language, which is completely different. Uh, there are certain behaviors and traits which are a little different. For example, uh, hearing people, they need not look at each other while they speak to each other because they can use uh, the hearing. But for deaf people, they always need to keep facing each other. They have to look at the other person while signing, you know, so they can't uh, move their gaze away. So if the deaf person moves, this, uh, you know, looks somewhere else, then, you know, like we can't sign, you know, anymore. So we get interrupted. So that is one thing. So there are a lot of other things, you know, like uh, about deaf culture. So many things are similar and uh, a lot of other things are also different. Great. Uh, thank you, Rahul, for that. So I'll quickly um, just talk about deafness. You have seen, um, so far, you have seen Mr. Gopalakrishnan and you have seen Rahul here using sign language. And that was the language that Dr. Hem Chandra was talking about. And that is a very, very visual language, which is known as sign language. And as you could see, they were both using sign language and we had an interpreter, Amrish, who was able to voice seamlessly and help all of us understand what they are trying to tell us. So now this is, this is unique to deaf people. This is a language that is used by them and by their family, their siblings or children who are using sign language, right? So this becomes a community. So people who are using sign language form part of the deaf community who are embracing sign language as their language. Now, I, I would like to also talk about a bit of little history to link to how sign language has come about in today, today's world, where everybody wants to uh, know about sign language. It's gaining popularity. But what was it earlier on? So as we know, uh, whoever is uh, being in the disability sector also understands that there are different models or different ways that disability is being looked at. And the most popular one is called the medical model, uh, where a disability is looked at as something that needs to be fixed, something that needs to be repaired. So when it is being looked at that lens, then deaf people are needed to have support to make their hearing possible again. So technology like hearing aids or cochlear implants, along with therapies for speaking and hearing is given. And that is the medical model. And that was what was prevalent um, many years ago. And later on, this slowly moved towards the social model, where it was looked at that the society needs to be able to adjust to include people with deafness. It was the other way around. So in the medical model, the people with deafness had to be repaired so that they can be part of the larger community. Whereas now the social model was slowly moving towards looking at the society changing or accepting people with deafness to be included. So they had to do some changes. And the third and the more recent um, model is the cultural and linguistic model. Because of deafness, deafness is a very invisible disability. You cannot see it 
like any other disability, you can see and identify, but deafness is something you cannot see. And which is why many people are not able to recognize the needs and wants of deaf people. So now linking it back to the language that they have, which is the sign language, visual language, it is, it's like two sides of a coin, right? Culture and language are the two sides of a coin. So deaf people have their own culture, which is very similar yet distinctly different from the majority of the culture who are not deaf. So that was brought about in the cultural and linguistic model where deafness and their community and their culture, because of the use of sign language, was looked at, you know, very closely. But if you look at India today, uh, all these three models are um, coexisting together. It's not one or the other, but it is all together. Right. So, like how Rahul explained about, you know, the deaf community and there is a distinct culture, this comes from the sign language, which we will talk about tomorrow in detail about what are the different, uh, the beauty of the language. And is it complete? Is it uh, like the popular uh, views of language? Can sign language be put in as a language in its own right? Does it have uh, a dictionary? Is it growing? Is it being documented? And these are different questions that many people would ask who are in the linguistics field, who are in the academic field as well, right? So we will talk more in, about that tomorrow. So moving on to the next bit. I would like to ask Mr. Gopalakrishnan to talk, uh, take us through how sign language today is being recognized and what are the different ways that it is being recognized, whether it is in the law, whether it is through uh, institutions. Can you please tell us? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Nita. Thank you, Rahul, uh, for your presentation. Previously, um, you know, I was born deaf. Um, you know, like uh, the reason for that is because um, while uh, during delivery, they used four subs to pull me out. Uh, well, in India, I met a lot of deaf people. Uh, the main issue is not the, uh, probably they have different causes how they became deaf, uh, maybe due to loud explosions or due to some sickness or due to uh, various other reasons. There are some, some deaf uh, children who are born deaf and some of them who have acquired deafness at a later age. So for them, they might be able to un understand sounds. But for those who are born deaf, uh, the main language is sign language because it's more visual. You know, like in a social setting for the deaf person, 
uh, like uh, in a family or with relatives when they communicate with each other talk to each other we don't understand much So there are a lot of issues that the deaf people are facing you know, due to the absence and due to the non-acceptance of sign languages. So I was just rephrasing the question Nita asked. Um, so to in response to that, um, he's saying that uh, you know when India got independence at around 1947, at that point of time, sign language not, was not allowed to be used much. The reason uh, for that was because in uh, 1880s there was a conference in milan in italy where they banned the use of sign language in schools you know like uh, at that point of time you know like teachers were not very much interested to use sign language they wanted to propagate speech uh, with deaf children so that is why that uh, kind of uh, decision was made. But uh, we had a lot of uh, people uh, from uh, the United Kingdom and the people who are uh, like uh, Madan, Dr. Madan, who had come to India to try and propagate sign language. So slowly sign language was used and propagated and advocated for. So. Uh, So since 2000, uh, since the millennium, so the whole scenario changed. So, you know, like, just like how uh, the coronavirus, just before the coronavirus, you know, like we had a different kind of life. And after that, now we have a different kind of life. So since the millennium, so the whole scenario changed and now sign language is being used everywhere. So we have a lot of sign language channels which uh, provides news in sign languages like MBM and uh, ISH. So we didn't have much of sign language used before. So right now we are uh, trying to, uh, you know, like advocate with the government, campaign with the government to have the Indian Sign Language as one of the official languages to recognize it as one of the official languages. So you know, like we have our uh, materials in sign languages and uh, sign language used in schools, and you know, like uh, in public places when we have these announcements made. Uh, so we need to have, for example, at the railway stations. When announcements, announcements are made, it has to be made in sign languages and a lot of accessibility issues can be resolved, you know, a lot of communication issues can be resolved. For example, if uh, I get caught with the police, so how do I communicate with them? So if uh, sign language is made as an official language, language then uh, a lot of issues can be resolved. Thank you very much.